right, we're going to finish up our 6-2 practice sheet. We did 1 and 2 together, I think, right? Yeah. All right, so let's work on number 3. We have 3 lemons for 50 cents. So we want to figure out how much money is it going to cost if I want 15 lemons. So let's set this up. Now, you might be able to do this in your head. So you might have an idea already what the answer is going to be, but let's set it up so we know that we did it correctly. So let's just put price on top, lemons on the bottom. And you could put lemons on top, price on the bottom. It doesn't matter as long as you stay consistent. So I've got 50 cents on top for three lemons. And that has to be D for 15 lemons. Now, like I said, you could have it over 3 over 15 equals 15 over D. Either way, you'll notice if you do the cross products, here you do 50 cents times 15, here you do 50 cents times 15. So it doesn't matter what you have on top, as long as they're both the same on top. Here the number of lemons is both on top, here the price is both on top. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So doing cross products, I'm going to do 15 times 50 cents has to equal 3 times D. So 15 times 50 cents is $7.50 equals 3D. Line down the equal sign, divide by 3. 750 divided by 3. $2.50. So $2.50 for 15 lemons. All right, now we want to tell whether each pair of ratios forms a proportion. So we're going to check the cross products. So this is where you say to yourself, okay, does 3 times 12 equal 4 times 9? Yes. So let's write it out. 3 times 12, 4 times 9. What is 3 times 12? 36. Does that equal 36? So we write yes. yes. That is a proportion. All right, let's look at number 5. 25 times 8, does that equal 40 times 5? So think of it, if you have 8 quarters, how much money is that? Two, two, two bucks. So 200, 4D times 5, what does that equal? 200. So, yes. That is a proportion. Yes. All right, let's check number six. Nine times three, does that equal 16 times one? Yeah. Now, guys, notice you could put nine times three first, or you could put 16 times one first. It doesn't matter. But nine times three is 27. 16 times one is? So they do not equal each other. Put a little line through equal sign. This is not a fun, uh, proportion. Sure. And number seven, two times eight, three times seven. So two times eight is 16. Three times seven is 21. They do not equal each other. So is that a function? No, it's not a function. All right, number eight. Solve each proportion round, where necessary round to the nearest tenth. All right, we have four times x equals 5 times 20. Now right away I'm going to do line down the equal sign. How do I get x by itself? Divide by 4. 
x equals... So 5 times 20 was 100, right? So that would be 100 divided by 4. So 25 equals x. Yep, that's fine. Now, I don't really think they give us a whole uh, bunch of room here, so if you have to do stuff off in the corners or on the bottom of the paper, that's fine. Okay, for 10, 27H equals 21 times 36. 21 times 36 is 756. Line down the equal sign. What am I going to divide by? Divide by 27. H equals... 28. All right, number 12. I'll bring them to you in a minute. Mm -hmm. 34 times r equals 23 times 17. 23 times 17 is 391. Divide by 34. r is 11.5. Yep, and this already is to the nearest tenth. Yep, that's okay. No, because that would round to the nearest whole number. We went around to the nearest tenth, so this is a tenth. All right, number nine. 15 times 34 equals 30n. 15 times 34 is 510. So we're going to divide each side by 30. N equals 17. You want me to slow down a little? Okay. Sorry, you'll just get so excited because you'll just realize you'll do the whole paper and you're like, oh, I just did this whole thing all by myself. All right, number 11, cross products 11 and 60, so 11 times 60 equals 6F. <laughs> 11 times 60 is 660. Now to get F by itself, I'm going to divide by 6. Good. So F equals one ten. If I divided by ten, it would have been sixty six. All right, number thirteen, last one. Thirty six times twenty has to equal seven J. 36 times 20 is 720. So what am I going to divide by? 7. J equals 102.9. It's 0.85, but the 8.5 tells us to bump it to a 0.9. So 22, 18, 18, 18. Okay, <laughs> last one together. What two things are we comparing here? 
Math problems and minutes. Does it matter whether we put math problems or minutes on top and bottom? As long as you know which one is which. So which one shall we do? So math problems on top, minutes on the bottom. Okay. So he can do 12 math problems in 45 minutes. He wants to know if they're all the same problem type. If he did 12 in 45 minutes, he has to do 20. How long is it going to take him? Now you can already look at this and say, is it going to take him less than 90 minutes? Yeah. yeah, because if you doubled this, you'd get 90. But 20 is less than 12 doubled, right? So let's just do our, so if we know we get, if we get an answer bigger than 90, we got it wrong. So let's do our cross products here. 12M has to equal 20 times 45. Okay. 20 times 45 is 900. What am I going to multiply or divide by to get to m by itself? So seventy-five minutes. Hour and fifteen minutes to do twenty problems. Don't worry, guys. It won't take you that long to do your homework tonight. <laughs> Are there any questions?